So last time I basically created a poll, so we'll be doing this kind of flower today. So I had to do some research to kind of figure out what the plant actually looked like because I wasn't familiar with the plant, I just had wiki to go by. And from what I understand it looks a lot like a bush, so we probably will end up expanding this later on. So once I got an idea of what we're going to do, I needed to start working on the texture. Now, I wasn't entirely sure um, how to design the plant as it was similar to more of a bush than a actual flower. So I think what I'm going to end up doing in the future is basically working on a system like script to make it into a bush over time. Uh, plants now have a possible ability to make tick updates, so we should be able to uh, work within those parameters to make it uh, automatically grow into other flowers. So I was experimenting with some different types of flower tops, and I decided to go with this particular one just to kind of um, give it a side perspective. Uh, this seemed to be the easiest way to actually go ahead and do that. So when we actually create the bush and stuff, it's going to... Um, obviously be a very similar texture, but it will be expanding outwards and around and stuff like that. It will be pretty cool to see the different stages. Once I got the textures made, I could finally import them and start setting up the actual files for the plants themselves. So I started creating a plant and then I selected the textures for them and filled out the settings that I wanted for the plant itself. Um, there was just, most most of the settings were actually already pre-configured that I didn't actually have to worry about, so I didn't need to change anything. There was just a few things uh, that I wanted to change, um, mainly the a few, few things around the properties like the color on the map and I believe the AI pathfinding was the other th setting that I needed to change um, but pretty much oh and the uh, flammability so mostly on this page that there was changes um, but yeah there wasn't that many things that I actually needed to do to make it a different plant or anything like that everything was pretty much already set up by M Crater that fit the uh, section so everything else was good uh, triggers we'll get into that later and then there was uh, the generation which I filled out and made sure that it generates in our custom custom dimension and our custom biome so once I've done that I basically could just duplicate that mod element and then update the texture and a few other properties like the uh, the name and the uh, the Pretty much it. that's basically it. I needed, I forgot to actually update the um, map color for the plants as well, so I'll probably go back and do that later off camera. But um, basically, I did that for all three of the um, flowers that we designed for the textures and stuff. So once we get that part ready, I wanted to add something else. So the next thing that I wanted to actually do is add support for basically flower pots and for that I needed the flower pot um, cross model for the plant itself and I grabbed that duplicated it and changed the name for what would be relevant to our flower uh, itself and then I needed the flower pot uh, base texture uh, this is because the flower plots have that and if for it to kind of look unique uh, or the similar to the rest of the flower pots I needed that texture to import and then we should have everything that we need we have the flower the dirt well our, we'll use our own dirt and the flower pot textures now we just need to import the models once I've done that uh, what I needed to do was set up the blocks for those flower pots so I ended up creating a the, using the model and a few other settings for the plants themselves. I went over the five properties for the actual flower pot itself, which are the sizes, and I filled this part out so I could basically go ahead and uh, get the proper hitbox for the flower pot. And then I just filled out the uh, regular properties 
for the flowers and then I moved on to the color on the map and a few other things here. Uh, once I got to that part, I moved over to generation. Uh, after I needed to create the other ones, so basically I needed to create the other flower pots. I could just do that by duplicating the same one that I uh, had the properties for, and then import the or change a few different settings like the the block that it drops and a few other things like the texture and model. All right, so the next thing that I needed to create was a procedure for the right click on block for the actual um, flower pot itself. So I needed to test uh, for a few things uh, for each one of the, basically the flowers that were, or the box that we're right clicking on. So this would be basically turned into um, an empty flower pot once we basically add it, but we needed to get the item back from the player. So, uh, it took a couple tweaking around to get the properties right and uh, started thinking about how this would actually be done. So I worked on getting the add to inventory and then I realized that that won't actually work because the block state won't work with the provided block state. So we need to get the flower instead at, or the type of block and then basically get uh, or set the local variable to the flower that we want so i just basically tweaked it just a little bit so it would work with the script that we had the next thing that i needed to create was a procedure when we right click on the empty flower pot itself so when we do that we want to add the flower or update the model for a custom flower and remove the uh, item from the flower from our right inventory from our main hand so I needed to create a procedure for each main item and then I needed to basically assign each one for a flower pot that it will basically replace the block with uh, with that I also needed to make sure that it was going to target the empty flower pot itself from vanilla and once I've done that I needed to also remove the main hand item for one item so it basically removes the item uh, very similar to how flower pots actually work so I just added all three of these to basically work with the script that we had. The last procedure has to do with the block um, when it, the block is broken we had to create a global trigger for this one in order to have it spawn uh, it's easier than creating a loot table for each uh, particular uh, drop and stuff like that. We would have to create um, one for each particular plant, which was a lot of work. So I decided just to quickly set it up through a global break procedure, and this seemed to work a little bit easier. Uh, we might still go ahead with the other one, depending on the mechanics, but I wanted to make sure that the the block that we're breaking is determined, and then basically the the flower itself is breaking. And then I basically made sure that the flower pots themselves would go ahead and drop the uh, flower pot, vanilla flower pot. So it would basically act the same way. Anyhow, uh, the last thing that I needed to do was test the flower pots and check to see how the flowers are generating. The flowers are generating great and the flower pots work. Thanks for watching. Peace out.